woman dies and meets God, shown why there are poor and rich people on earth. My name is Pauline Glam. On the day that my NDE occurred, it was autumn. We'd gone for a family picnic, visiting friends in Victoria, playing outside at this picnic ground in the Mount Mason Ranges, which is a very beautiful part of Australia. We were running down a hill as children, and I tried to run very, very fast to catch up with everybody because I didn't want to be last. In running so fast, I tripped on a rock, and instead of going with the impetus, I overcorrected and threw myself back, hitting my head very hard. In fact, it was so hard that I later found out I'd sustained a traumatic brain injury in the right temple impact. But I didn't feel anything, any pain. I had my eyes scrunched, and I felt like I opened my eyes, but I was still in darkness, then I came out of my body. When I came out of my body, I realized that there was no impact, no pain at all. I just felt incredibly light. It was very shortly afterwards that the atmosphere was thin, and I was on the verge of being in space. I looked around and saw a black hole appear above me, some would say it was a wormhole. Now, many describe it as a tunnel. I was vacuumed into this tunnel and traveled at great speed through it. I looked up and saw a gold light. As soon as I saw that light, I was there, in the tunnel, immersed in the light, feeling like velvet and honey. I felt held by God, like a father holds a child, unconditionally loved and filled with fearless love. Any fear I had about what was going to happen to me was annihilated with a honey tree called love. God spoke to me directly, answered my questions, and the only thing I can remember is that the force holding everything together is love. He gave me so much information, but I remember thinking it's so simple. I looked around and realized I was safe. I could see faces below me, people looking up at me. I flew down, gliding and flying, not walking as we do here. They greeted me as though they knew every aspect of my life, like some kind of champion. It was mind-blowing to be known. After they greeted me, I looked around and saw a big wall. Over the wall, I could see hills, a beautiful landscape and children playing. It was pure joy, with light and colors that were just joyful and joyous. It was perfection. I could see the children's laughter and happiness. Far past the hills, I looked up into the sky and saw a light, a beautiful light, not like our sun. It moved towards me, and as soon as I thought it was beautiful, it was right in front of me. It had a white center, like a candle, and a man stepped out of it. Immediately, I knew it was Jesus. He laughed when I realized he could read my mind. I felt hugged by him, not just a physical embrace. He told me things about who I was to him, a special name, and I had a part to play in his story. Overwhelmed, I fell to his feet, cried, and talked to him. Looking up, I saw a gold light on the top of his foot, realizing the crucifixion was real. He assured me it didn't hurt. I saw the suffering, but my awareness shifted to the gold light. I was in a gold mist then traveling over the landscape with him. I saw a group of hateful people, and he told me not to hate them. He had died to save the whole world. As I sat on that monumental black rock, the visions of the future unfolded before me like a cosmic tapestry. The people bathed in a divine light, worshipped with a fervor that transcended the earthly realm. It was a place filled with the Holy Spirit, and in that moment, I understood the profound connection that bound us all. With a nod of agreement, I consented to return to the mortal plane, and as I did, a gentle push from the other side propelled me back into the confines of my own body. The subsequent encounter with skeptical doctors and a world that seemed oblivious to the ethereal truths I had witnessed left me grappling with a profound sense of disconnection. Something profound had shifted within me. No longer could I partake in trivial gossip, and a conscious effort to cultivate kindness became my daily practice. It dawned on me that there was much to learn, and the chasm between the haves and have-nots was not a manifestation of divine intent, but rather a consequence of human frailties, insecurity, unchecked greed, and the egregious errors committed by those who exploit others. Reflecting on the global landscape, it became apparent that the root cause of poverty was not a deficiency in divine provision, but rather the result of men, irrespective of their skin color, pilfering the bountiful resources of the earth. The divine mandate was clear. God provides for all, and the responsibility to share rests upon each individual. In the realm of scarcity, poverty was not a curse but an opportunity for the privileged to become the hands of God on earth. 
a revelation crystallized in my newfound understanding of life. It was about love, a force capable of transforming societies and healing the deepest wounds. To manifest this love, a paradigm shift was imperative. The world needed a change of heart. The schism from God, I realized, was the root of untold suffering, propagated through generations by the shackles of intergenerational trauma. Reuniting with the divine required a meditative journey, a conscious effort to bridge the gap and transform our lives from within. If this narrative resonates with your soul, if you find yourself yearning for more tales that stretch the boundaries of the mind and reflections that plumb the depths of the human spirit, I extend an invitation. Consider subscribing, and with the gentle push of a notification, join me on an enthralling expedition. The journey of adventures and contemplative musings is an ongoing exploration, and together, we shall uncover more revelations, exchanging cheers along the way. Here's to the ever-unfolding tapestry of existence.